and welcome back to Let's Play Mother 3. Alright, so now we need to head our way, make our way south to uh, Tenetene Island. Unfortunately, we don't have a boat or a plane or anything, so we're gonna walk there. Let's go. So yeah, welcome to the next dungeon, the uh, sea floor. I don't like this dungeon, like, at all. So the gimmick of this dungeon is basically you have an oxygen meter. If it ever runs out, you get warped back to the beginning. And if we want to restore it, we just need to use these handy dandy oxygen machines. These very, very strange oxygen machines. Yeah, the pig mass technology is really strange. I mean, it works, so whatever. But yeah, basically gimmick of this dungeon, we need to go from oxygen machine to oxygen machine and try to not drown in between. Also, we have some fish to deal with. Surprisingly, a lot of the like native wildlife in this area aren't really that aggressive. Also, we're underwater, so a lot of the things around here are weak to uh, thunder. Even though we're underwater, I'm not really sure how we're getting thunder to- Oh no, that's actually really bad. Kumatora, no! Fine, we'll use some love. Actually, we probably didn't need to bother with love. Oh, no. This has gone really badly, actually. Let's, uh, try to finish this off really quickly. Oh. This is fine. I don't care about Kumatora's offense and defense. Got it. That went really south really fast. One second, I need to heal up. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about auction while we're in battle. But yeah, I've never been a big fan of the whole you only have a limited amount of time to go from point to point type of dungeons and RPGs. That was kind of a thing back then, wasn't it? I know a couple games did that. Oh wait, uh, where's Luke? Lucas can't equip this. This needs to go to Kumatora. One second. But yeah, I know a couple of games did that during this section, or this, like, time of gaming. I remember there was a dungeon like this, and I think it was, uh, Golden Sun 2? In the desert? Yeah, I think it was the desert dungeon, where you had to go from, like, hot or not hot spring. You had to go from, uh, Oasis to Oasis. I know some of the Tales games did that, too. Actually, yeah, another thing about it, a lot of them used to be, de or, like, desert dungeons, where you had to go from Oasis to Oasis. Keep yourself hydrated. Anyways, we do want to be careful, though. I want to see if I can get through this area without, you know, drowning. Then again, drowning isn't that bad. Well, right now, drowning isn't that bad. Just because we just get warped back to the beginning immediately. And we're, like, right next to the beginning anyways. Actually, that might be faster now that I think about it. You know what? I'm just gonna let myself drown a little bit. It's fine. Also, yeah, if we stand still, we start drifting, which is actually kind of bad. Because this area, basically, movement is very, very tight. We need to be super careful about how we move in certain areas. Otherwise, we won't have enough oxygen. Anyways, before we head back in, let's uh, take a quick nap. Also, Bronson must be very confused about what's happening right now. All he knows is that these three kind of fell from the sky like an hour ago, and now they just won't stop running into the ocean. Speaking of running into the ocean, let's run back into the ocean. Also, yeah, unfortunately we can't run in this area either. That would honestly make this area a lot better, in my opinion. It would basically, it would definitely make it a lot less frustrating. Because, yeah, there are certain areas later on where we're going to be gonna be kind of reliant on luck. And, like, enemy placement if we're going to be able to make it through or not. For now, though, let's just keep heading south. We want to head over to the island, which is to the south of, uh, Tas- Or, not Tasmania, there's nowhere islands. Also, we got ourselves a map here. Alright, so let's take a quick look. Yeah, see that ladder on the left there? That's going to be a pain to get to. Because there are no auction machines until we reach the ladder. Okay. Also, we're going all the way down to 60 meters, it looks like. Which is actually kind of deep, isn't it? 
I forget what the world record is for, like, free diving. Anyways, we're not going to go forward quite yet, though. I'm going to go back and refill my oxygen before we go forward. Kiss me. Actually, I guess it's not really kissing us, because, yeah, if you're going to refill someone's oxygen like this, you would have to cover both their mouth and their nose. So it's less of a kiss and more of a eating our faces. Also, one little detail I never noticed before. Duster doesn't blush after that happens. He's okay with us, apparently. Good for him. Also, yeah, there are pig masks down here we're going to need to be careful of. Let's deal with them right now. They're all navy squeals. You know what? Get out of my face. Give me your oxygen. Actually, give me your life jacket. We should definitely be wearing life jackets. Well, actually, no, we're already in the water. They wouldn't really help that much. Also, I did look it up in between episodes. That is, in fact, Yamma. It turns out that with this font, Gamma just kind of looks weird. Apparently that's kind of an issue with a lot of fonts when it comes to Greek letters. For some reason, they don't really keep it consistent on how they're, like, rendered. Okay. So now that we're refilled on oxygen, I'm actually going to double back and go down the left path. We are super tight on oxygen on this route, so we need to be super careful. We basically need to make use of diagonal movement as much as possible. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. Uh, we just need to make our way to the ladder. We're not going to bother talking to any of the fish, by the way. They're NPCs and they have nice dialogue, but we don't have time for that. Give me oxygen now, now, now. Thank you. Oh, all right, made it. But yeah, there's a reason I wanted to come down here. There's a pretty good piece of armor for, I think, Lucas? in this area. Whew, that was actually really close. And we're gonna need to wait, or we're gonna need to make our way back, too. Well, I guess we could also just drown and then just go back to the beginning of the dungeon and go from there. But meh. I want to try to avoid drowning as much as possible for now. Also, yeah, for some reason, a lot of the, like, fish in the area are really non-hostile. Like, I think there's only, like, one type of native fish that Okay, never mind. There's more than one type of native fish that'll go after you aggressively. Also, hold on a second. Fish row is fish eggs, isn't it? We're fighting baby fish that have turned sentient. Anyways, uh... Just keep normal attacking. Okay, yeah, we'll use another freeze beta for now. Also, I forgot how fast the rhythm is in this section. Please go down. You should have gone down by now. Please tell me freezing didn't break you. Nope, that's what we're looking for. That's... one way to die. Force feed your enemy your body. Anyways, we got ourselves the awesome crown. I think that's only for Lucas. Yeah, only Lucas can equip that. Nice. It's really good for him. And honestly, that makes coming down here worth it. Now, let's get back to that oxygen machine before we drown. But yeah, like I said before, the way back isn't nearly as bad as the way here. Simply due to the fact that drowning isn't as bad. Alright, so with that, let's move forward. Also, hi, fishy. Wow, that's, uh... Oh, I just realized that fishing pole is still stuck in his mouth. I thought he was just dragging it along like normal. Whoops. Huh. That's actually kind of dark and probably super painful for him. Please give me some oxygen. I am about to run out. Ah, uh, am I going to make it? Barely made it. Nice. 
we were even able to talk to fish on the way here. Normally I never talk to them because, like I said, it's way too risky. Alright, that wasn't too bad. I actually got that first try. Alright, so let's uh, take a look around this area a bit more. Ooh, wait, present. Yeah, we're gonna double back for some oxygen before we move forward because there's a little side quest we can do down here. I forget if we can ever actually come back here after we're done with Tene Tene Island. But yeah, there's a hermit crab here who lost his shell. Man, what would a lobster need with a hermit crab shell? Hermit crabs don't even have their own sh Well, I guess it's technically stolen property in the first place. Actually, yeah, he might have actually stolen a shell from a lobster. Maybe that's why he's angry that the hermit crab took it. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that shell then. Alright, let's go. So we're going to want to head south towards 60 meters. I really wish the map also marked, like, the auction machines along the way. I'm not going to be going to too many side areas from here on out. Because I don't think there's anything else here that's really super awesome. In terms of, like, equipment. Thank you. Also, yeah, pig mess don't interrupt you if you're, like, trying to re-establish, or, uh, what is it? Refill your oxygen, surprisingly. They're, you know, polite like that. Also, yes, not every oxygen machine down here works, so we're gonna need to be careful. Basically, if they're blinking, they're working. Also, I forgot to heal Lucas. Uh, we'll do that, that after this battle. One second. Also, yeah, uh, your oxygen meter also doesn't go down while you're in menus. There we go. O2 me, please. You know, can't we just drag one of these with us? Like, we can just tie it to a rope and have Duster drag it along. They can't be that- well, I know, I guess they're oxygen machines, so they're probably super heavy. Oxygen tends to be pretty heavy. Also, yeah, next chance I get, I need to stop by, uh, what's it, what's he called? My item guy. I'm kind of running out of inventory space already. Oh, I forgot to drop off the memento. I think we should still be okay, but we might accidentally use it at some point. Which, you know what, it's fine. I'm definitely going to pull them out of storage and, like, towards the end of the game, though. Because there's no point keeping them after that. Also, new enemy type. It's a rock lobster. Heh. <laughs> Although we are looking for one that stole that hermit crab shell, though. Also, yeah, Thunder has been very good to me lately for some reason. I mean, I'm okay with this. Alright, let's keep going. Don't look at me, thank you. Oh, to me. No, oh, to me, thank you. But yeah, I'm honestly, this dungeon wouldn't be as bad if it weren't for the fact that the animation takes forever for them to refill your oxygen. I'm really glad we kind of moved away from this type of dungeon uh, in more recent RPGs from what I remember. I can't think of any that are in like recent where this was a thing. Anyways, we want to come down here, because this guy has the shell we're looking for, and he won't let us take it without a fight. Alright, you want to fight? You want to fight? Let's fight. There we go. Anyways, we've got the Hermit's Crab Shell back, and now we need to take it back. Uh, one second. 
What's the fastest way back? I don't think that we can make it back into- You know what? I might just let myself drown just to uh, go back and return that thing. Actually, if I was going to do that, I probably shouldn't have gotten oxygen. Whoops. And we got a magic chart for that. Alright. You know, I don't... Th I can't remember if we can actually come back to this area afterwards. I think we actually can. Yeah, actually, this is probably a dungeon we can come back to. I don't think there are any that are actually permanently cut off until Chapter 8. So, you know what? Screw it. We'll do it some other time. The only reward is 1,000 DP, which right now, money is actually not really that big of an issue. There's nothing we really need to buy anytime soon. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna loot this area and then we're gonna go back and return that hermit shell. Also, how far are we? Uh, we are almost to the end. But yeah, we might as well at least explore the area a little bit more. Oh, give that present before we run out of oxygen. Trivia card three. Okay. I'm going back to the beginning of the dungeon. Anyways, I'm just gonna cut out the uh, traveling back to the hermit crab part, so I will be right back. All right, so let's go uh, drop off that hermit shell crab shell, or that hermit crab shell, shall we? That's a lot of S's. Here you go. Oh, no, no, stop drifting, thank you. No, mine, all right, fine. But yeah, reward for this, basically money. Nice. Actually, I kind of want to drop that off at some point. I don't want to carry that with me. Alright, so how far away are we from the next area? Okay, yeah, you know what? I'll also be right back once more. Uh, we're probably just going to go down to that ladder section again, so one second. Alright, so we're back basically where we left off uh, before we went back to deliver that uh, hermit shell crab. Hermit crab shell. For some reason, I can't say that right. Anyways, let's keep heading south. We're actually not that far away from the exit. And oxygen, and not being super wet. Oh my god, I must be super uncomfortable to walk like this, actually. I'm not a big fan of walking around in wet clothes, but walking underwater sounds like the worst thing ever. And it's salt water, too, so it's gotta be stinging their eyes. It's fine, we're almost there. Actually, I'm assuming it's salt water. I'm assuming the oceans in the Mother 3 world work like the oceans in real life, in that they're salty. Anyways, get out of my way. There we go. Yeah, whenever we're like close to the end of the battle, I tend to just try to rush things. Just so that uh, we can save some HP. Alright, but at least we're getting to like shallower water now. Yeah, I'm not really sure how deep people can normally walk. I'm pretty sure... I'm not sure if 60 meters is that deep in terms of, like, just, like, pressure and stuff like that. I think it is actually relatively deep. Uh, yeah, deep, relatively speaking. Oh, magic pudding. Oh, God. Uh, oh, to me, please. Thank you. But, yeah, I'm not sure how safely normal people can just go down and stay down there. Hopefully we won't get the bends for ascending this quickly. Alright, I think we're almost to the end. So if we are almost to the end, let's also make sure we're fully healed up. For... reasons. Uh, Kumatori could use a little bit of healing. One second. Let's get a little bit of oxygen before we get out of here. This one is a little especially bigger as compared to the other ones. Thank you. Uh, is there anything over here before we get out of here? Because, yeah, the exit's just to the south. 
Oh, seriously? Okay, what can we dump? You know what? Eat your nut cookie. That sounds really dirty. Maybe I shouldn't phrase it like that. But yeah, we can probably get rid of those nuts and cookies. But yeah, say hello to the boss of the area because of course there's a boss in the area. It's Master Eddie, as in Whirlpool. Let's beat up a Whirlpool, shall we? All right, so let's do the usual debuffs and buffs. Uh, I don't think he's vulnerable to crying. Let's find out real quick. Do I have any attack items I can use? A bomb. Do it. Oh, please don't put any... Okay, good. So yeah, basically he has... Okay, he can do that. For some reason, it seems to always be dusty whenever I play this game. That happens too. But yeah, he basically puts us to sleep if we're not careful. Overall, he's not too bad. Alright, so we got some shields up. Uh, let's get our offense up. And then Kumtor is just going to be spamming thunder for the rest of the battle. And Duster will wake up eventually. Also, yeah, that's why I want the shield. That is technically a physical attack because it's affected by shields. Also, I just noticed something. Are both of his arms on the same side of his body? Actually, yeah, they're both on the exact same side of the body. That's actually kind of weird. I never noticed that before but when fighting this guy. That's fun. Okay, maybe fun isn't the best way, isn't the best word for that, but... Eh, one thunder isn't too bad. Actually, how much does the freeze gamma do? Let's find out. Uh, does anyone need healing? Boney could probably use a little bit of topping up. Also, we might need to reestablish our shield soon. Alright, time to go all out. Actually, if I'm gonna go all out- No, we're not gonna use that PK love in this battle. I need to save PP for healing. Then again... Yeah, you know what? We need to heal. Lucas doesn't have a shield anymore, so he's gonna take the full brunt of any physical attacks. It wouldn't be a bad idea to reestablish that shield after we're done healing, though. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah, we kind of just lost all of our items, too. Which is why I said that healing items aren't that important in this upcoming section. So yeah, no matter what happens, at the end of the battle, you just kind of get wiped out. We also don't get any experience for that battle, unfortunately, because we didn't win. But I think we made it. For better or for worse. But yeah, we, uh, we lost all of our items. Also, they weren't kidding about all of our energy. We are all at 1 HP, 0 PP. We still have our equipment, fortunately, but anything that wasn't equipped, yeah, it's gone. Our key items are still here, but everything else, yeah, we don't have any healing items or anything. So we're gonna need to be, like, super careful. Oh, hey, Snake. But yeah, let's, uh, let's save. And with that, I think we'll end the episode here. So next time on Let's Play Mother 3, we're going to explore Tiny Tiny Island a little bit more. And hope to God that this frog doesn't die. So, till then.